Look what we have here today. Oh lord. This is a project. Uh, another Husqvarna 394. How did this end up on my bench? I traded for it. Now, why would I do that? Well, because it came with a bunch of parts. It came with a bunch of parts, but um, it's just, you know, it's dirty. Like, really dirty. It's used, it's dirty, but it actually, I don't think it's been run that hard. It looks terrible. I mean, it looks all like hell. Look at that. Looks like hell. Looks terrible. Gotta get it apart, get it rebuilt. It just, it needs a little bit of love, you know? The usual. The love. So, not gonna bore you with all of this, but you know, you start taking it apart and kind of see what's up. And as it turns out, it's got pretty good compression. So that's a plus. I suppose it actually runs. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not going to try it, but uh, there's really no need to do that because it's coming apart. It's dirty enough to, to justify tearing this apart. Now, is it dirty enough to justify um, tearing the, the bearings out too? Uh, maybe. Maybe. But uh, let's check the squish first and see where that ends up because if the compression's good, then we may actually want to The compression's good, then we may actually want to keep the piston, cylinder, rings. You know, I don't need to change out the rings at 160 pounds of compression. You know. Now, what I did have trouble with was taking that stupid clutch off. You guys have seen me take clutches off, so I'm not going to bore you with that. Except to say, it was probably one of the most difficult I've ever done. Hmm. Big squish. So this clutch cover is kind of shot. Um, but the internals are probably fine. Eh? No? That's kind of cooked too. That's kind of a shame. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I'll salvage what I can. Maybe just salvage the spring. Ugh. that a little too much. Okay. Now, uh, other thing I'm kind of noting here is that this is actually one of those rare 394s that actually has the high top. Um, it's not easy to find those. So, this horn Either 395 high tops fit, sort of. You have to kind of ream them out. Um, but it'd be it's just a whole lot nicer to have this particular part and the high top, assuming you like high top. This is clearly cooked. I'm going to call this an aftermarket wire. This is busted, but I might be able to put that back together with a little bit of heat. Don't lose that part. I don't know if the air uh, shields here, the, the air guides are even available anymore. 
three millimeter guys down here. Hold the coil on. Let's just take this coil off. I'm going to assume that this is a good coil, actually, because supposedly this runs. Doesn't mean it's a good coil, just means that hopefully it's more likely that it's a good coil. And I'm running low on these metal trays. Now we can check squish, hopefully. The answer is it's pretty high. 25... About 43. Okay, that's not too bad, I guess. So I'm just gonna work this apart. Take the whole silly thing apart. You've seen me do that before. So nothing exciting there. Um, gonna tear this completely down and to the cases. And we'll do the rebuild. Who's excited? Gotta be excited. Is this the WJ39? It is a WJ39. So the more desirable, car desirable carburetor is on here, which is cool. Um, obviously little things broken here, you know, the wires are somewhat to be desired. This partition, this stupid partition here always breaks. So you gotta get new of that. I don't know whether to change out the top handle or not. I have to see what I have in stock. I might just swap it out. This unit's kind of nice to have, just if you want to hold your scrunch. So, yeah. Let's tear it down. If I find something interesting, I'll let you know. What a mess. So as it turns out, when I looked in here, the bearings looked new. So what I did, I just took some plumber's putty and blocked this all off here, and I'm just going to clean this up. I think uh, with a squish of 43, gasket is 18, so if we did a base gasket delete, we'd have a squish of 40, uh, 25. So you know, that will be fine, rather than um, doing a whole uh, bridge port you know, to this and decking it and whatnot, probably for this saw that'll be fine. So I do a little bit of a little bit of port work, just do a base gasket delete, and then uh, we'll be good. I, I I don't mind splitting cases, but really the bearings look okay in this, so not much point. I will put new seals in, of course. Um, that would seem like a good idea. Not much else exciting here. Uh, it's just really dirty, so I'm going to go clean the whole thing off, so it's as clean as possible. And then we can start the uh, the rebuild here. Got to shine this up and all that stuff. So let's have some fun. So as usual, I've got my E clip trick here. Um, this is just a three sixteenths E clip, and it holds this tensioner rather than using a stupid rubber piece, which goes bad over time. So this does not go bad over time. And let's see what else I got. We got, we got this down to bare metal. So we're nice and clean there. Going to be ready for a base gasket delete. And I wanted to put in some new seals here before I did anything else. So let's put in the new seals. You know, these are probably fine. Uh, I was washing this out with mix, and there's no mix coming out there. They're fine, but they're also 20 years old. So you know what? Goodbye. bearings in there are beautiful. Normally I look in there and I see bearings that are, you know, all icky looking, like they've been run with, you know, zero to one mix. It just all carboned up and whatnot. This is all nice, so I, I really don't need to put um, new bearings in there. Brake cleaner and a Q-tip. Dirty. That's better. Quick dry right wipe. There we go. Get out your piece of Coke can. Don't have to use an anaerobic sealer, but you can. Coke can goes down over the lip. Now you 
take the seal and you spin it on down. Easy. Deep socket. Tap her on home. Pull your Coke can out. Looks good to me. Perfect. Do the other one. Only takes a minute. This one. This one's a little weaker looking. That's a good thing to pull these out. Sometimes you need a little extra leverage, so you get a little something in here just to give you that. There. That lifted. Good. Seals are okay, but they're old. It's awesome. This one's a little more dumped up. It's still not bad. There's no play here. Just no. There's no play in the bearings, so nothing wrong with reusing them. Coke can again. A little bit of anaerobic. Couple of taps. She's straight. Straight is good. Pull your toe can out. Gentle. Right on the lip. Can go just a hair more. And for this side, test it with our depth gauge here. 3.3, I think we can go to like 4, 2.62, okay, so, five. okay, so this side is slightly high, do coat this with WD-40 mostly because it's convenient. It has less to do with it as a lubricant than anything. I'm not worried about lubricating the bearings or it not being a good lubricant for the bearings because it doesn't matter. Ultimately, you're going to have mix on here anyway, so as long as the bearings have something on them to start with, it'll be fine. I'm going to do a little bit of port work on this, a little poor man's porting. You know, we're not going for super duper compression on this saw, I just want to get a little extra pop. We'll see where that takes us. Which probably means I better get the piston back on here so I can actually measure this, right? Right, okay. Doing a little bit of poor man's porting here. And one thing that I've done is just you take an old ring, stick it in there to whatever height you want, and you make a line. Uh, with a permanent marker, and it gives you an idea of where you want to go with the, the porting. Now, obviously, where you put that line is important, um, but uh, I'm not an expert on that, so what I do have is I do have guides. Um, you know, if I degree something or whatever, you can just make business cards and the business cards give you an idea of where you want to be, say, with your exhaust or whatever. But anyway, for, for the purposes of this, I've got a line in there, and I've got, um, I have these hand pieces that are push-button latch, and we're going to try those today. Uh, I've never tried it, uh, at least not on this application. I mean, I use these hand pieces all the time, but... Um, I haven't tried it for this, so let's try it and see how it goes. Well, let's 
grabby. Not too chattery, that's good. Probably holds a little bit better. So uh, Sean Carr was the guy that turned me on to these, and these are just um, Den Shine, whatever it is. So these are E-type latch uh, hand pieces, and they're latch, but, but push button latch, whatever. Slow speed, and they're like $15 a piece on eBay. Shipped. bad. So, so far that's letting me get in there pretty good without jumping all around. So Sean seemed to think that these actually had a little higher life than the other stuff, um, the other ones that I was using, so we'll try these of course and see. So far so good. Yeah, looks pretty good. I'm not going to do extensive porting on this, uh, this unit here, but just kind of, you know, going over this for fun. Nice smooth outlet. Looks good to me. So, seems like a fine handpiece. Um, I don't know if it'll have longer life than the others, but one can hope, I suppose. So the result of this uh, poor man's porting session is that I almost got a whole port job out of a head. Almost. This head died. So I, I'm not sure that these are really any stronger um, than the other. Something's buggered in the head here. So, here's the result of the port work, and so what I used, um, again, is just business cards set to whatever height, so for instance, this is like the exhaust, so you stick that in there, and now you have a height for the exhaust. Um, as far as the width of the ports go, what's nice is on these used cylinders, you actually have a line. It shows you where the skirt is, so you don't want to go over that line a couple millimeters back from it's good. Um, I smoothed this out. Transfers, obviously. Um, and what I'm using, I mean, the tools that I'm using are just these right angle heads, of course. Old ring. Um, make my own burrs. These are 2.35 millimeter. Um, not the usual Dremel, which is, I think, 3 millimeter. It's the usual Dremel. So 2.35, 2 and you have to turn it into a latch, so you have to grind on it a bit. But it works. Um, probably my favorite instrument here is just this, you know, I was kind of fighting with these, <laughs> this for years, but um, this is actually like my favorite tool now. So this is a split mandrel. All it is is a drywall screw with a slice down the middle. And that slice allows me to put some sandpaper in there, and this runs in the Dremel, and you just run that right into your ports, um, smooths them up, up right nice. Just makes everything look really nice, you know. So I gotta wash this. I gotta ultrasonic this, clean this all off. But that'll run much better than stock. So I mean, not lots of tooling here to uh, to do this. Definitely the right angle hand piece is a must if you're getting in there. These round drum sanders are great. Uh, they're really quite nice. So that you can get in there with those. I mean, and you can buy them in bags. They come, you know, lots of them. Hope you guys like this little poor man's porting edition here. Um, stay tuned for the rest of the build. So I'm kind of trying something here. I, I want to give credit to somebody, but I, I don't remember who it was. They came up with the idea um, of putting the piston in the cylinder first before 
um, putting the piston on. So most of the time when I see these assembled, put the piston on, then fight with the cylinder, get it on the piston, and then the rest of it down. The idea was get the piston in the cylinder first, especially to get the rings in there. Um, you don't really need compressors to do that because you can just do it by hand. Once it's in there, then get the harder of the two circlips in. So let's see if we can do that. Most of the time the PTO side is harder for some reason, so I, I'll put the PTO side in here. I usually leave the ears facing um, down. This gets up, but down. You get the idea. Okay, so we've got an OEM pin bearing in there, and the plan here is to do a gasket delete. This is the that old ugly saw, by the way, in case anybody's wondering. So this is degreased. That's cleaned. I'm going to use 1184 for my gasket delete. Actually, before I do that, it'd be a good idea to throw a little bit of blue Loctite in these cylinder head bolts. Good, now that's in there. Now I can work on my gasket delete here. Now I have checked all this is fit. I've done my poor man's porting on the cylinder head. This is not heavily ported, this is just gentle, you know. The flywheel side over here is probably the thinnest part, so it's where you gotta be extra special careful to have it even. Not goopy, just even. And whoever came up with this um, piston cylinder idea, uh, I'd, I'd like to thank them, so please comment. Um, I, 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 it's back in the comments somewhere whose idea it was, but um, I liked it, I tried it, I've done it a few times now, I think it works pretty good. So now what you do, get your wrist pin, I can make sure you're good on your gasket delete stuff, again, just lightly wet is going to do the trick. The, ga uh, the wrist pin's halfway in, and I'll put this basically at top dead center to do this I'll get my wrist pin in here push the wrist pin in and now you know that you've got the piston basically um, exactly oriented properly and the rings aren't hooked or nothing so it just now it becomes hopefully easier to put the whole thing down this way you're assured the rings are in the right position and whatnot. So I, I, I like the idea. I thought it was a pretty good idea. Make sure there's no debris in here. Put a little oil in here. Again I use WD-40 just because it's convenient not because it's an amazing oil and the oil that hits this later is going to replace this anyway so I'm not worried about it. Get your final circlip, and now this certainly becomes the trickiest part of the whole thing, but it's still doable, at least with this particular saw. So we're good there. And what's nice is the 1184 is going to wait for you. You know, you don't have to rush it necessarily. It's okay to let it tack up. Um, it's going to seal up just fine here. So now our circlips are in, which, of course, is easier said than done. But circlips are in. The ears are are down. Now we got to do. You can move this to basically bottom dead center if you want and then very slowly and gently slide around into place. 
Whoop. These are like 3 16 or something like that. They're not metric. I'm not putting this in with the impact. That's not the idea. And you torque them by hand diagonally. Now you really, if you're doing this, you really need to have um, the block, the partition, and your muffler on here, because otherwise it, it, the muffler runs into the dog here if you're trying to put this on and off. So, kind of cruddy, the way it is. And they just made the muffler a little smaller. They don't need to make it that big. Doesn't need to fill the space. But whatever. One, two, three, four. That's it. We've got good squeeze out, so that should seal up just fine. Put the decomp in, and then what we do is you work on uh, kind of the rest of the saw here, putting it together uh, as usual. Everything else here is pretty straightforward. So we'll be back a little bit later. 1% battery. Real quick, when we make when I make mistakes, you guys benefit. So <laughs> I had this mostly together, but I forgot that I had to put this spring in first before I put the muffler in. So I have to take the muffler out again. Great. Whoops. Oh well, it's okay. It's okay. So muffler out, put the spring in, uh, and attach it uh, here, and uh, then you can attach it to the, the tank. But the idea would be, put the tank on first. I, I didn't because I was missing a, one of the rubber bumpers. So, whoops, next time I'll put the tank on first. Okay, keep going. Here we go. And here it is, all done up. So I did change out the top cover, just because I wanted to go to low top. Um, the low top filters are like much cheaper and much more common, so uh, that's the preference here. It's got about 165 pounds of compression. It's got nice pop. Um, let's see if I can get it to run. The real question is, can I start it one-handed? Love these saws. So, a lot of stuff, you know. The problem with these things is that it just takes a lot to do them. Every little piece of parts got to be right. And, uh, you know, a lot of these are used parts, but um, they're all solid. So, just takes a lot to make it right, you know. Little things like these silly screws that go from here and into here, those are often missing. The rubber bumpers are often messed up. You know, these just get so ridden so hard that um, tons of little little stuff ends up going bad. Uh, the flapper here, so you got to get new of those. Um, and it all adds, it all adds up. It just it adds up and messes you up as far as putting it back together. If you don't get all those pieces, if you're missing one thing, I mean, I was missing this, held me up for a couple of weeks. So, yep, all used parts, not super pretty, but uh, it cuts nice. This actually cuts pretty good. So, anyway, I just wanted to give an update on what you can make a, a really cruddy saw look like. Um, this really was a, a really crappy looking saw, and now it's uh, 
back to looking okay. So yeah, different top cover, um, different handle even. I put a different, a different gas tank on here. Not because I couldn't use the other one, but um, I happened to have this one cleaned up, so I used that. Um, I don't even know whose clutch cover that is, but whatever. It's a bunch of used parts. It is, it is the same chassis. <clears throat> I believe it is the same cylinder head. Fun stuff. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.